What is up, YouTube? Dots Gaming here, and today I'm bringing you guys the updated version of my add-on guide for ESO, and this will be for the Wolf Hunter patch. Anytime I make any big changes to my user interface, whether or not I'm taking add-ons away or adding in new ones, I like to update this video because I get asked the most about my UI. If all the questions I get, I'm always getting asked, what add-ons are you running? What add-ons are you running? What are the settings? So anytime I make any changes, I like to update this video. And I did make some changes recently, hence this. Now, this is one of the first times I think that I have basically just taken add-ons away and really haven't added anything. So if you've seen my add-on setup before and pretty much have your add-on set up the way I do and your, your settings set up the way I do, feel free to just go to the written version and see what stuff was removed and you can feel free to remove that stuff yourself. Or you can just sit here, watch the video, see what I've changed, see what I've added, etc. Now, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all of the add-ons individually and what they do and show you guys a little example of what they all do. And then I'm going to go through and go through my specific settings for the add-ons and for the default ESO settings as well. So if, you, if you're just interested though in what add-ons I'm specifically running and don't care about what they do, feel free to check the description. They will be written there. But starting right with it, we are running Action Duration Reminder. This is basically kind of like my buff add-on. So whenever I use a skill, as you can see, shows a countdown timer on it with how much is left and if you swap bars boom it comes right there and you can see even when you're on your front bar how much is left on that buff on your back bar so it's extremely helpful for tracking your buffs and your skills and how much time is left on each of them and it's very very lightweight which is one of my favorite parts about it i also am running zirconian's add-on selector one of my favorite add-ons this allows you to create basically add-on packs where you can assign different add-ons to certain profiles and simply load them at the click of a button. So for example, if I'm ever using Master Merchant, um, I have like a Master Merchant profile. I have a profile without Master Merchant. I have a profile for when I PvP in Cyrodiil. As you can see, this is pretty this is pretty thin. And then when I PvP with my one of my guilds, I'm also running this as well. Um, so it just allows you to basically select and unselect mass amounts of add-ons and you can just press reload ui and it'll load or unload all of your add-ons at once extremely helpful i'll go over the specific add-on packs at the end so that you know specifically why i'm running certain add-ons um but that's why i do run this i am running advanced member tooltip this is mainly a guild master add-on so if you're a gm this would be a good one it basically shows how much money people have donated to the guild bank and how much they've withdrawn from the guild bank um, over a period of time. And then it also shows how long they've been in the guild. So I know for me, I have like a donator rank that's gated behind gold donations. So I want to be able to see that. And then I also have a rank that is gated behind um, time. So I want to be able to see how long people have been in in the guild so very very helpful for that we also have an uh, awesome guild store awesome guild store is kind of like a mandatory guild store add-on right now if you want to be able to search through the guild store pretty quickly um i i don't like the default guild uh user interface i think it's kind of limited it's one of the things i talked about in my quality of life uh video that i made that i'd like to see added but yeah this is what awesome guild store looks like it, you, as you can see much more robust filtering for searching for items or even is a text search which is very very good now the add-on's a little buggy though it's a little buggy even if there's some items in the guild store it'll sometimes say like no items to display but you just have to keep hitting next page next page next page so that does kind of suck but it is kind of the best thing we have available to us so i do recommend that it is a, overall a very good add-on that just has a little bit of quirks to it um i it also pairs very very well with master merchant it has a plug-in for master merchant that allows you to filter by deals which is very very helpful for item flipping so overall very good add-on and i do recommend it we also have champion point respec which is dressing room for champion points very helpful it allows you to save and load configurations of champion points with the click of a button very nice especially if you play multiple specs pvp pve makes it a lot quicker yes it obviously still costs you gold but it does make that a lot quicker 
We also have combat metrics. So anybody who's done a lot of PvE knows what this is. It's basically a damage meter. It's uh, at the top left of my screen. It shows how much damage you've done, how much healing you've done, what percentage of that you've done. And you could also bring up a more detailed information about the fight. It'll show you a lot of information. This is pretty much the standard DPS meter add-on for PvE. So if you, especially if you're really, really into to dungeons and to uh, trials, I would absolutely recommend this. We have Dark UI. Dark UI is the main add-on that kind of runs my thing. It's what gives everything the look that it has. It's why everything was kind of dark tinted. All, all the stuff is faded. It's like night mode for ESO. It is one of my favorite add-ons. Very lightweight. I enjoy it a lot. We also have Dolgabun's Lazy Rit Creator and is one of the only reasons I do my Rits. It is so easy to use. It is so easy to use. Once you have a Rit, you literally go up to the, a crafting station. I should probably actually go pick up the Rits for this guy so that you guys are able to see. So if I go pick up the gear crafting Rits... So I go, I talk, it picks them all up really, really quick. And then you're able to go up to the station. As you can see, it's red. I go up, I'm able to hit craft. It'll craft everything just instantly. I don't have to do anything. It creates everything. Boom, that writ is done. And now the station is green colored. And I can go turn that writ in and it'll automatically open anything I get from completing the writ. It just makes your writs really, really fast and easy to do. So... Definitely recommend it, especially because Ritz are a really good way to make gold uh, if you do them on all your characters every day. So, very, very good add-on. We also have Dressing Room. Dressing Room allows you, like Champion Point Respec, to basically save build profiles with gear and skills. And you can load or unload them with the click of a button. Really, really good add-on. Highly recommend it, especially if you play multiple builds. We also have Harvin's add-on settings. Now, I believe that was bundled in with the libstub add-on. You do need to download libstub, lib dialogue, lib async, and I think Harvin's add-on settings is bundled into it to make a couple of the later add-ons work. So if you are having some issue with some of the add-ons in the guide, make sure you have these four things download. Lib add-on menu, you can pretty much leave unchecked. This was added in with one of my other add-ons and I don't know which one, but I haven't had any issues leaving it disabled. Um, so if you're having problems, you can try re-enabling this, but I just leave it disabled all the time. I don't know what add-on gave me this but um it's here so i just left it we also have master merchant the big boy add-on the one that takes up all the memory on my computer whenever it's turned on and basically what it does if i can find an item there we go is it shows sale prices for items from your trading guilds extremely helpful for selling and purchasing items so you can know am i selling this for a good price am i buying it for a good price etc i do not recommend playing your game with the add-on on turn it on whenever you want to go buy or sell things but whenever you're playing the game i recommend turning it off because it is such a hog on your computer's resources it's not it's not worth having just leaving it on while you play. I just turned it off. I just realized I forgot map pins. Map pins basically for me replace the whole sky shards, lore books, destinations uh, combo because it literally handles all of that for me. So as you can see, it displays all this stuff on my map. You can even go to filters and choose what you want to see or not to see. It also does show the time rifts for the Sigic Order, which is very helpful. So I am running that for, for my, my map icons. We also have Raid Notifier, and Raid Notifier kind of is um, it's the standard for trials for, for a raiding add-on. It basically tells you when certain mechanics are going to happen and to get yourself prepped and ready for them and when to do certain things. It's just really, really helpful and does make doing trials much more easy. And a lot of raid leaders do require you to have this add-on, so definitely check that out. Um, Sanks Ultimate Organizer is an add-on specifically for one of the guilds I PvP with. So if you do, if you're not in a PvP specific guild that requires you to use this add-on, don't bother picking it up. I only use it when I have PvP with that guild. Votan's add-on list, I believe, was included with either the mini-map or the keybinder, so I just leave it turned off because it doesn't do anything when turned on, I don't think, or if it does, I don't really notice it, so I just leave it turned off. 
And then Votan's Keybinder does something that I believe should be base game, but I have it because I do have multiple characters. It makes all of your keybinds account wide. So every single time you play a new tune, you don't have to redo all your keybinds. It just makes them all account wide. Your standard keybinds as well as your add-on keybinds, which you do need to do for certain add-ons like combat metrics, dressing room, um, etc. So definitely one I recommend. And then the final one is Votan's mini map, which is on the right side of my map, or on the right side of my screen. That's what a lot of like the the libraries like the lib stub, lib async, all that stuff is needed for. For some reason, Votan's required that stuff and didn't include it in the download package. So you do need to download some of it separately. Um, lib dialogue is required for Sakonian's add-on selector. It doesn't say it. Um, oh, they added it. This was not there last time. So you need lib dialogue for Sakonian's add-on selector. So that's what that's for. So that's the list of all the add-ons I'm using. In terms of what add-ons I use and what packs, for Cyrodiil, I only run Action Duration Reminder, the Add-on Selector, Champion Point Respec, Dark UI, Dressing Room, all these libraries for my mini-map, and then my mini-map. So that's all I run when I, P when I PvP. I, I keep it as thin as possible so that I, I, I get all the frames I could possibly get. When I play with my PvP guilds, I literally do the exact same thing, except for I enable Sanks Ultimate Organizer. Master Merchant is basically all, all the add-ons that I've talked about. And then PvE is everything but Master Merchant. So that's all the add-ons I run and the packs that I run. So if you're not interested in how I have everything set up, you can stop here. But if you want to know how I have all of my settings, then we're going to get right into that. So once I get into my add-on settings, so we have Action Duration Reminder. I have account-wide configuration on, multiple target tracking on. I find that very important, so I do leave that on. Um, I left this stuff pretty much disabled. The shift bar is very important. The shift bar is that bar when you switch bars, you're still able to see your back or front bars, timers. Very, very important. Now, the default location for the shift bar, I found very annoying. It was right underneath my, like right above the skill bar and right underneath the HP bar. So what would happen is, you know, let's say I have volatile armor up, right? And I switch bars. What it would do is it would move my health bar up so that it had room down here and then whenever the buff went away my health bar moved back down i found it extremely annoying so what i did was i unlocked it i went in the settings here uh and unlocked it or clicked move shift bar and i dragged it above my health bar so now when i switch bars it just appears above my health bar instead of below it but that's just a personal thing uh bold font 18 0 ignore decimal point this is pretty much all default otherwise pop up alert off i pretty much have everything else disabled the big thing that i changed was the shift bar awesome guild store i'm pretty sure i have these on default i think the only thing i may have changed is that there was a setting in here that had it automatically open the um yeah the skip guild kiosk dialogue I turn this off because if you turn this on, it will literally, if you interact with the guild trader, it just skips right to the guild store, but I'm a guild, I'm a guild leader. So I need to be able to bid on traders. So I need to be able to see, I need to be able to click bid. So if I have this turned on, it'll skip that, but everything else I pretty much, I pretty much just left default champion point respec default combat metrics um i did turn on account wide settings i moved my fight history down to five and i think my safe fight memory is 10 i don't know if that's default but i know i changed this down to five uh keep boss fights i have off monitor group damage on damage in large groups on show stacks of buffs on turn off and serial on even though i turn it off with the add-on pack but i have this on just in case auto select channel on and then live report window on. That is that thing in the top left. So I did turn that on. It is not locked. I should probably lock it. Um, layout is compact. Scale to 100. Opacity 95. Show DPS on. HPS on. Incoming DPS on. Show incoming HPS on. And show time on. I'm pretty sure that's all default. And then all this stuff down here is just off. Dark UI. Pretty much just left this default. Just color theme dark. And it did the rest. Dressing room. I personally only do two rows and two columns um this i left default i actually i did not know this even existed so i'm going to turn on clear empty skill slots and unequip empty gear slots just in case because like let's say you had a gear set saved right like for my incinerate setup right let's say i have this saved 
and I'm PvPing, right? And I change I want to change to my incinerate setup, but I don't have my Maelstrom Lightning Staff in my bag. If I equip my PvE setup and I have my resto staff back bar and my maelstrom is in my bank, it won't unequip my resto bar. It'll leave my resto equipped because it couldn't find the maelstrom. And then same thing with skills. Like let's say I'm switching and for some reason I, I don't have Flames of Oblivion. It'll leave Coag in that slot. So I actually, I didn't even notice that until now. What I would recommend is turning on unequipped empty gear slots, clear empty skill slots, um, and then you can change the number of rows and columns to whatever you want. But that is, otherwise everything else is default. Lazy Writ Creator, default. It will, basically, when you first interact with a Writ table, it'll ask you, do you just want to use default settings or do you want to customize them yourself? I just clicked default. Uh, lib Group Socket, no idea what this is. I just left it the way it was. Master Merchant, the only thing that I think mattered was the delay initialization, which I believe they turned on by default now, so I don't even think you can edit it. But otherwise... If you want to pause the video, go ahead. This is what I have. I don't think I changed anything. Um, as far as I remember, nothing is different. Um, but you can feel free to mess with this if you would like. I left it at the default settings. But if you want to know my numbers, scan frequency 120, history size 14. I think that I changed. Uh, mid item count 20, max item count 3,000. So that's what I have for Master Merchant. Raid notifier, pretty much default. Um, in most situations, at least that I've experienced in trials, if, if a raid leader is going to ask you to do anything, they're going to ask you to come in here and go to like Mav Lorcaj, and then they're going to have you go here and change this to full. So it'll literally display every possible thing about a fight. So whenever, whenever you're doing a raid, if they're, if they're going to remind you to do one thing, it's going to come in here and tell you to display full, complete information. But otherwise I just left everything the way it was. In terms of this, this is the Votons minimap settings that's in this add dash ons. So I have the pretty much the default settings, except where I turn left on show at siege, show in combat. I did turn these on. These were off by default. Um, show and HUD, show while looting, show while mounted. Now, if you want to move the minimap, because I get asked about this a thousand times. How do I move my Votons? It appeared. It's huge. I don't like it. I also turn off the clock, by the way. All you need to do is turn off lock position and size and then bring up your mouse and you can move it around, resize it, do whatever you'd like. So this, this is the setting, lock position and size. If you want to leave it where it is, boom, press on, it's locked. If you want to be able to mess, like mess around, move with it, screw with it, turn this off. Um, in terms, the, so that's all my add-on settings. Now, in terms of my regular settings, I do get asked about those all the time. I run in windowed full screen anti-aliasing on i run my graphics on basically the high preset except where i turn off bloom so uh, you know toggling this off will increase performance and like it literally doesn't do much for the game it makes the lighting look like a tiny bit better but it's eso i want to squeeze every freaking bit of performance out of the game so because we all know so i just turned this off uh audio you mess with this as you prefer Gameplay, I have my uh, custom color set to really bright green and really bright pink. So I feel like that's really easy for me to see. I have double tap to dodge, obviously turned off because I just like one button dodge rolling. Ground targeting range lock on, prevent attacking innocents on, quick cast ground abilities automatic. Uh, consolidate area loot on, auto loot on, auto add to craft bag on, loot history on, default soul gems, gold purchased. Uh, tutorials off, this doesn't really matter. I actually should probably do crown for this, it'll be much better. Uh, camera, I'm pretty sure I just left that default. Interface, I have the names. I prefer the user ID, just so, you know, I because I, I generally know people by their user IDs and not their character name. Uh, group of five counter automatic. This stuff is literally all on here. Chat bubbles, I keep turned off. And then the frame rate latency and that locking that position, that's this stuff at the bottom left. So I would recommend turning those on so you can kind of see those things. Nameplates, I leave turned on and I left the default settings for that. I find the nameplates very helpful. Same thing with the health bars on, all default stuff. Uh, indicators, alliance indicators is enemy only. And then I have on, 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 all 100. So I'm pretty sure that's just all default though. Social, I, I obviously turned off the profanity filter. I'm okay seeing some profanity. Um, so I turned that off. And then I turned off leaderboard notifications because I don't care if somebody beat 
Ethereum archive. So I turned that off. And then I also turned off auto decline duels, AVA announcements automatic. And then I also messed with the colors of some of my guild chats. But that's obviously very, very, very personal preference. Now, combat. Because I also get asked this about 300,000 times. Ability bar, always show. Attribute bars, always show. Resource numbers, number in percent. And that is how I obviously get these things to always show and display the number and percent of my health, magic, and stamina. Very important. Okay, I just do this in the default. Ultimate number, I also have turned on now. I do that in the default. I do not let Foundry Tactical Combat handle that anymore. Combat text. My combat text, I use a default ESO combat text. I really like it. I don't like any of the other combat text add-ons. I actually think one of the things that ESO did very, very well was their combat text. I very much enjoy it. Um, their buff and debuff system, I loathe. But their their combat text, I I love it. I think it's great. So I use the default combat text for incoming and outgoing damage slash healing. And then for my buffs and debuffs, I only use the ESO default debuffs. I don't like how it puts all the buffs directly above my bar, whether it's the long, permanent, short, doesn't matter. It puts everything above your health bar. It sucks. You can't move it. And, and, like, there's no different zones. Like, I wish you can put the long buffs in the bottom right and, like, certain buffs here and other things, like, in other places. But, you know, unfortunately, this is what it is for the time being. So I just use the target debuffs because I do enjoy that. But for my buffs, I just use action duration reminder. Um, and then I just leave everything else off. And then I went over all of the add-on stuff already. But that's pretty much it, guys. That is my user interface. So I hope you guys enjoyed the update to this guide. Like I said, I do get asked about this a lot, so I do always try to keep this video updated. Now, the main reason, like I said, that I changed my add-ons was because I was noticing some FPS stuff while I streamed. You know, the F my FPS was still good overall, but I felt like it was lower than it should have been. I feel like, you know, I, I could have gotten more out of my system. And after talking to some people, I, you know, I basically decided to kind of just drop all the big UI packages like FTC, LUI, AUI. They're just too much for what they do. I just found that they're, they're, they're too much of a performance hit with the way that ESO kind of handles their add-ons. So I'd rather kind of run a little bit thinner in the add-ons department and actually have my game perform well than be a little bit thicker in the add-on department and get a big FPS drop in PvP and get really annoyed because I died since my game looked like I'm watching it was a PowerPoint presentation. But that's just me. So if you guys enjoyed this, I'd appreciate it if you slapped a like on it. Um, if you have any questions about what add-ons I'm running, why I'm running them, certain settings, etc., please feel free to leave a comment below. Um, also, let me know what you think. If you like the user interface, uh, you know, thank you. Let me know. Um, and for more ESO guides, more PvP montages and videos and other great content, please subscribe to the Dots Gaming YouTube channel right here, obviously. As well as hit the little bell to keep notifications on so that you're always aware of what I'm doing here on YouTube. So I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching my video today. Thank you very, very much. As always, I'm Dots Gaming, and I will see you in the next one.